go to any public place where people go to mill around. Um, my variant is the coffee shop or the park where I'm on my bike. And you'll note the number of people fiddling with their phones, fiddling with their laptops, with earbuds in their ear. I bike along with earbuds in my ear. Um, it's the general consensus of people that I know is that oh my god we're, this is this is disturbing. Everybody knows or eh, knows that this is a disturbing trend, but nobody really seems to know what to do about it because they, you know the people who are disturbed by it are just as hooked on it as anybody else is. Um, well, I look at it this way. Um, my view of time or the present or becoming, if you want to call it that, is pretty much similar to Nietzsche's and even, I suppose, Sophie's. Uh, although the way that I generally um, uh, illustrate it in my chosen metaphor, and a metaphor is all that this is, is the tantric one with the monster with the open maw out of which shapes fly at you. <laughs> Um, that's reality. Um, and this business of us seemingly slowly migrating back into the matrix, assuming we ever came out of the matrix, I don't know, this way, in other words, we're, we're all going back into some virtual reality, into hyper-reality, as Baudrillard would have called it, um, although his, I think his view of it is a bit different from mine, and I'm just sort of poaching his term and altering it. But <clears throat> um, the main thing that I'm trying to point out is something is happening. <laughs> and where is it going? Where is this business of us spending our lives in cyberspace taking us? Well, first of all, I, I have to point out, uh, again, as usual, this us I don't necessarily include myself in. <laughs> Arrogant, though, though that may sound, I do sort of believe myself to be enough of an eccentric or I see myself or I comport myself as though I'm, a, I'm as much of an eccentric that all this stuff that these other people get up to has less of an impact on me in my own estimation of things than it does on them. I suspect everybody feels this way. <laughs> um, the main thing is we're all going into this as individuals. Um, this, you know, it's all very well to sort of look around and see everybody playing on their phones and say, my God, these people are all a bunch of faceless drones that are now plugged into the matrix. Um, but each of those people has their own sort of take on all of this. What am I doing? Well, I'm listening to relaxation music to help myself sort of ruminate on some philosophical point or another, or I'm trying to concentrate on my inner life, i.e., concentrate on that part of my life that I can only live intuitively. For example, right now I'm attempting to loosen a stiffened muscle in my right uh, thigh. You'll notice that I'm sort of squirming a bit as I'm, as I'm talking. And I'm trying to intuit my way into one of those muscles to fix it. It's out of it's it's stiffened or it's somehow out of the way. I do all that stuff when I'm listening to music, when I'm relaxing, when I'm um, sitting in a coffee shop. I when I sit in coffee shops, I'm either listening to deliberately meditative music, or I am listening to say a philosophical lecture or another YouTube video from another YouTuber or something like this. I'm not sending blind texts off to a pile of other people, or not even blind texts. I'm not just interacting with other people and texting everybody everywhere and talking about the latest meme and the latest TV show and say, let's meet up for coffee so we can sit there across the table from each other and tap on our phones and talk about uh, reality TV or um, you know what we're going to do on Friday night or whatever, um, which we all suspect everybody else is doing. Eh? We all suspect that everybody else is just in, in using the Internet uh, for the lowest possible lowbrow reasons. Gaming, surfing pornography, although it's probably not surfing pornography in a coffee shop, but, you know, just stuff that generally seems to have no redeeming characteristics whatsoever. Um, well, um, <clears throat> I have here just a little picture of the monster. That's uh, Kali, the goddess Kali. And the Hindus say, well, look, you have to understand that she is what she is, and whatever value you place on that is up to you. That's the ma the monster with the shapes coming out of the maw. Um, looks ugly, looks terrifying. 
get used to it because that's reality. And once you actually get used to it, once you actually get your sea legs and you get used to dealing with this, it's not, as Zafi implies it is, an automatic case of existential horror to the point of death. Um, coming to terms with that monster, with that horror of becoming. Um, it's you're just riding a tiger. You're you're riding the wave. You're just um, you're aware that all this stuff is happening, but it's only terrifying if you're too attached to the things that are around you. If you're too attached to a certain view of human civilization, if you're too attached to the idea, I wish all these people weren't playing with their phones around me. It's it's freaking me out. Uh, it's freaking out my ability to play on my phone because I want to play on my phone here, but I don't want anybody else to do it because it, you know that kind of thinking. Um, and I suppose there's plenty of other people that are just sort of going with all of this. They, they don't even question any of it. Um, it all, this great hyper-reality, is uh, the reality that they accept as real. I don't know. So Mystic of the Sands asked me, um, transhumanism, which is kind of where, you know, you can say this weird phenomenon of everybody playing with their phones and your laptops everywhere is taking us. We're just heading right back into the Matrix. Um, or we're heading into the Matrix, and whether or not we're heading back is another story. Okay, what is that? What value does that have? Well, is it... Are we, are we becoming the last man or the overman? I would say that, that, again, like everything else, that monster, that form flying at us, which is now the rapidly developing technology, is neither. It's neither good nor bad. It simply is. It's simply another curve uh, that life is throwing at us, or another form flying out of the maw of that monster. This never stops. <laughs> it's part of becoming. All this new and disturbing stuff that we see, and we go, I don't know, I don't like where this is going, whatever it is, even if it's an item you've read on the news, or if it's an item, or if it's a, uh, some stat that you heard, or something you've noted in your life, it could be as simple as you don't like the way fashion design is going. It, it disturbs you vaguely to see that this is happening, or you don't like the fact that um, gay marriage has happened, or you don't like the fact that you don't like the fact that gay marriage is happening. You know, you, you, there's so many things happening to disorient you at all times that it all becomes a little bit much. You know, you see, you know that that famous image meme of the guy sitting in his chair like this, and his mind is being blasted by by what's coming out of the screen. That's kind of, you know, he's facing that monster with the open maw. Um, he looks like he's actually holding his own, but he's. He's got to hang on hard, <laughs> um, hang on tight, or that's going to, you know, drive him crazy. I don't think that um, transhumanism has one nature, ultimately. I think it has as many natures as there are people who are going to engage in it. Um, for example, let's just compare myself with somebody my exact opposite, I guess. Um, with me, the... the the um, beauty of transhumanism would be that it would buy me another 40 or 100 years in this life. Some people are horrified by that thought. Another 40 years of this? Another 100 years of this? Oh my god! All right, you don't have to approach transhumanism that way. You can say another 100 years of a completely different life, because this life is perhaps from somebody else's perspective, not worth living. They don't want another hundred years of this life. Correct your life. It's not this life anymore. Um, it's whatever life you want it to be. Um, if this life is not sufficient for you, create a you that is sufficient for you, uh, at least externally. Either way, you're kind of forced to examine your inner life to determine what you make of transhumanism. Is it just going to be another hundred years with memes and uh, trips to McDonald's and walking through the mall and, you know, talking about the latest song, the latest reality TV show? Is it just going to be more of all that? 
Or are you going to use the extra hundred years, or however long, immortality, I guess, it's possible, to continually, quote-unquote, improve yourself? Um, that's the thing about this new hyper-reality. It's brought hardcore filth pornography into socially conservative societies. They can no longer block it out. Uh, it's brought pornography into every person's house. It's brought gaming into everybody's house for free. Um, but it's also brought Jean-Paul Sartre into everybody's house. It's brought Gregory Sadler into everyone's house. I'm, I'm hooked on his lectures lately. Um, it's, um, it's brought Nietzsche into everybody's house. It's brought, you know, addendum into everyone's house. Things to talk about. Things to expand your mind. Um... That monster just is. It just looks like a monster from a certain perspective. If it's just going to create more of the Walmart society, yes, you can say that this is a horrific thing that is happening. Everything is becoming standardized. If, of course, you are somehow attached to the idea that there is the world as the world should be. People shouldn't be playing with their phones all the time. They should be doing something else. Um... Okay, then, well, you should be doing something else, is what you're essentially saying. Um, if you're not attached to a world that, you know, we all know will not last, Pantahrai, uh, and you're okay with that, if you're okay with the, the horror of becoming, or if, you, if it's not even the horror of becoming, if it's just becoming and that's that, um, I would say that, this shouldn't that transhumanism shouldn't be either pushing you towards a last manish thing or an overmanish thing. Uh, I suppose it could be pushing you towards an overmanish thing or uh, last manish thing, um, but it all depends on what you want out of it. Can you imagine a world in which everybody can be the king? <laughs> uh, that's what virtual reality promises us. Everybody can be the Turkish Sultan <laughs> with everything that you possibly ever wanted, including power and all the sex you wanted, all the wealth you wanted. You can have it now <laughs> if that's what you want. Or if you simply want um, to improve yourself by your own standards in a different way, it's not necessarily that we're just destroying everything in life by doing it, by, by going transhuman, I guess. Because what transhumanism actually ends up being is something that's got to be experienced individually by all of us. Um, that monster isn't something that we look at as a people, as a race, as a group. No, that monster we all look at individually, that... With any luck, that'll come out as a little icon, so I can use that as the uh, as the avatar for this video, but I don't think so. <laughs> um, you know, we all have to experience that, that becoming by ourselves. No technology can help us with that. Um, however much we get to manipulate the actual details of our own reality... Remember that scene from The Matrix where he looks up and down and in every possible direction there's these faintly red glowing pods with a little human in it? Well, they might just be an amorphous mass of farmed humans, but each one of those people in there is experiencing it by themselves. They are individuals. Because something in that pod is perceiving the illusions that the Matrix is visiting upon them. Good, bad, or whatever, each person is alone to decide and always has been. That's the very nature of individuality. It's neither good nor bad. I can see how it can offer us the tools to become something better than we are, uh, at least by our own estimation. It can also lead to us becoming more disgusted with ourselves. As I say, if it, somebody decided they wanted to be the Turkish Sultan, okay, there, now you're the Turkish Sultan. Let's wait ten years and see what you make of that. Poor choice? Maybe. Um, 
a little bit um, sick of this the sweet smell of the incense and the you know had a little bit too many dancing girls and too much Turkish delight you know that kind of thing too much wine and after a while it's like oh this is disgusting or have you actually delved deeper and deeper and deeper into yourself to try and figure out what you are using the um, the matrix I guess the transhuman sort of new reality to try and discover what you are and try and be what you are um, like I say, I might just sort of want another 40 years of this with a very little change, or 100 years, or 200 years, or whatever. Somebody else, say somebody who's a quadriplegic with a severe mood disorder, might simply want a functioning body and no more depression. Um, that might be all that they want out of transhumanism. So transhumanism may actually be... Um, for somebody who believes that they hate life might actually be um, the answer to that which caused them to hate their own existence. Um, it's a tool. Like anything else, it depends on how you look at it. Um, I don't want to introduce too many new ideas in here, but I can I, I like to say... Think about transhumanism through the matrix of Amor Fati, which is a Nietzschean idea, but it's it's nothing. It, it's it seems to be a universal idea. Que sera, sera. We can like it or lump it. Um, it's just going to happen. Things are going to happen. Objects are going to continue to fly out of the maw of that monster. Uh, transhumanism is the next one that's coming along. Okay. After that, another one will come. <laughs> another object. And another one, and another one, and another one. Um, do you like that reality, that fact, because that's the way it is? It's always been that way. Or do you dislike it? <laughs> um, is transhumanism a great thing? Or is it a horrible thing? Or is it just another thing? <laughs> 